Hello, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here on LoveRugbyLeague.com with me, James Gordon. I'm joined as ever by Drew Derbyshire. We are sponsored by Betfred and by Heaven and Health who have come on board with us this week, supplying us with some great food and nutrition. Drew's body's a temple already. <laughs> He's trying to get me on the straight and narrow. Um, do well, check, out, do hey, check out Heaven and Health. They help me lose five stone. Five so stone. So if I can do it, lab. anyone can do it. Um, we are, you have got some foodie features coming up. We've, yeah. we've asked, you've spoke to a number of players um, to give some insight into their diets and, mm -hmm. First and up, not so much. We've got, well, it's going to be every Saturday this feature, every Saturday lunchtime. Uh, and we're, first up on Saturday is Jackson Hastings. Over yeah. the South Red Devils, or is he? Is he is it's Wigan, Wigan now, now, but, but yeah, we'll go, we'll, we're going to talk all sorts in this week's show. But one thing about Jackson Hastings that I, I a little sneaky peek into this feature because I've seen it. Ice cream. He has ice cream after, did he, he say he has it after breakfast? I think, no, he has it after training, I think he said, something like that. So, so, it made so me feel less bad anyway. Yeah, he, 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 says he, has, he says he has ice cream, but obviously because they train maybe five or six times a week as well as playing on the other day, uh, yeah, it's, right. it's easy to burn if, if, if you want to If you want to know more about the, uh, the healthy food and the meal prepping and all that sort of stuff, um, drop us a message and we'll put you in touch with the Adamson brothers who run Heaven and Health. It's important to... Uh, to note as well that they deliver meal preps all over the UK as well. So whether it's Lancashire, uh, Yorkshire, Cheshire, the South, Midlands, <coughs> Wales, right. Scotland, wherever wherever in in the UK they deliver, uh, and they do uh, lamb, chicken, and fish as well. So this week we're going to talk about the internationals from last week, Great Britain. We're going to talk about the Ashes series. The venues have been confirmed. Have the dates been confirmed? Yeah, the dates. Yeah, they are. Um, for next year, uh, we're going to talk Sunny Bill Williams. We're going to talk Toronto Wolfpack, and then we'll run through all of this week's uh, rugby league news as well. Please do leave your comments um, if you've got anything to say, or you want to react to us, or you want us to give you a shout out. Uh, please do leave in the comments. Drew, let's start by going back to um, last weekend. Uh, obviously, Great Britain's first test against New Zealand ended in defeat, 12-8. Um, but that was completely overshadowed by the other game of the day. Well, there was two other games of the day, of course. Fiji beat Samoa first, but Tonga, um, a massive win for them over Australia. The first time anyone but New Zealand has beaten Australia since 2006. And the first time anyone but... New Zealand, Great Britain, or England have beaten Australia since 1978. Oh, it was unbelievable, wasn't it? It was. It was such a breath of fresh air to to watch after uh, the the Great Britain game because I got up early uh, for the Great Britain game. I was disappointed with not only the the performance from the Lions but uh, the game as a whole. I just I just didn't enjoy it. It's not. It wasn't, and it, it didn't feel like an international game because of uh, the slow rock speed. But we'll come on to that in a little while. Tonga. How good have they been for the international game since 2017 World Cup when Christian Wolf amazingly put this, this strong squad together? It's an unbelievable squad. I, I think I said uh, last week, uh, on last week's show, that when I, I, I just didn't see them beating Great Britain as that much of a surprise uh, compared to other people. Other people were going on as though Great Britain were left stunned and it was a shock result, but I don't think it was because most of the the team playing the NRL, you kind of expect them to, to come up with these kind of a, uh, performances against Great Britain and uh, New Zealand, but against Australia, I, th I, I, feel, I thought every everyone thought that uh, the Kangaroos were, were going to come out on top, but Tonga stuck in, uh, they dug deep and uh, they came away with a win. It was it was fantastic to watch, especially at the end because Tonga's goal line defence, Australia were throwing absolutely everything at them uh, and they, they, st they stood strong and I love the wingers, me, for Tonga. Daniel Tupu, Daniel Fusitua, uh, both six foot three, six foot five wingers, um, probably 15 stone on, on them both. Uh, fantastic players, and, all, and obviously Jason Tomalolo is always fantastic to watch, isn't it? Well, you'd hope he was for a million dollars a year. Uh, on a 10 year contract. On a 10 year contract. Um, so Tonga have now beaten New Zealand, Great Britain and Australia in the last two years. So of course they beat New Zealand at the 2017 World Cup. Um, Tonga certainly now mixing it with the big boys. Let's let's talk about Great Britain. Um, a lot has been said, I think, 
I mean, I, I did a column on this. We could talk about that actually in a, in a second, but um, another disappointing performance. Another another game where Great Britain they had a nice, they had a decent completion rate, but it just looks like they're not even interested in scoring points. Who's that? Sorry, Great Britain. <laughs> well, it's not as though well they're not interested in scoring points. I just I thought we just lacked creativity from the arms. I don't think Jackson Hastings. Or Gareth Widdup had the, had the best games. I thought our last tackle pause in particular were, were incredibly poor. Um, I'm, like, Gareth Widdup's normally a, a fantastic kicker of the ball, isn't he? But I thought every every last tackle play that, that he did, get, he, he tried to, when we was near the line, he kept trying to put grubber kicks through and chase on chase them on his own and it just wasn't working but is, it, but is that trying. is that not to do with it, it, this obsession with completion rates and turning them over and forcing repeat sets doesn't that govern what you do because it's like well you know we don't want you to kick it just strikes me that is it drilled into we don't want you to kick dead because it'll be seven tackles mm. we don't want you to kick in the air and, and it be diffused and then they're starting on the 20 is there too much focus being right we're going to win this set we're going to get a kick in and we're going to keep, we're going to pin them as far back down the pitch as we possibly can. And it's not about, well, actually, how can we score in this set of six? Possibly. Um, but I just, I just, obviously, Jackson Hastings and Gareth Woodup have not, not played together before uh, ahead of this tour. Uh, so they're still rusty in the halves. Uh, and obviously, we've had two different fullbacks uh, for both games. Obviously, Lachlan Coote played uh, in the Tonga game and then Johnny Lomax got the. The nod as well, but I think all, all of the back line haven't really performed to, to the potential uh, in the tour so far, James. And, and obviously, that's where most of your tries come from your, your wingers, your fullback, your centres. Um, and I just don't think, apart from probably Zach Hardaker, really, Zach Hardaker can probably go away from this tour and, and be proud of his performances uh, against Tonga and New Zealand. I thought he, he has had a real dig. Obviously, he's a full-back player in his position at centre and then he'll play his position again this weekend uh, on the wing but with Jack Hughes coming and playing out of position at, mm. at centre. We'll, we'll probably talk about score selection in a little while. Um, but I think the whole... It just, it just seems like a team that hasn't... Hasn't really played together, and it and it hasn't in in effect because the back line's uh, quite different to what we've seen, and, and so are the halves as well. Josh Hodgson at hooker, I thought wasn't great last week. You can see why Bennett picked Hodgson because he guides the team around the park, and he he does act as the the, the third half back in effect at times. But I thought when Daryl Clark came off the bench against New Zealand, we, we, we were much sharper. Uh, last week he, he added a little bit of zip. He, he actually ran with the ball from dummy half as well and, and troubled the Kiwis because of how a quick play of the balls. But I thought uh, the rooks the rook speed um, shouldn't have been allowed to be that slow from referee Chris Kendall. I thought it was reminiscent of a Super League game, um, and that shouldn't be the case at international level, especially when you've got international uh, top tier teams like Great Britain and uh, New Zealand. It should, it, they, they were lined. The Kiwis were lying on the lines for four or five seconds at a time, and and it I mean, Hodgson was one that sort of came out afterwards and said they should have the two the dual ref system that they have in, uh, in the NRL, which I don't think is a terrible suggestion. Um, I mean, I, so we'll talk about what we've learned from the first two weeks of the Great Britain tour because I, I've done an editor's column on this this week. A good one as well. Um, I don't, I, even I, I don't, some, I don't even, give James credit a lot, but this week it was even um, even some of my uh, even some of my, some of my expansionist friends on Twitter who who always give me a load of stick. Actually, I had a, I had a few nice messages from them for a change. Should, um, should we talk about in selection first? Because that yeah, so I, so one of the points I was going to say the stubborn squad selection from Wayne Bennett, and this ties into something else which I'll mention. It seems, and he's almost said this in an article in the Mirror. He's like using the Great Britain tour as a way of like preparing for the World Cup with England, which is just completely. I understand that, yeah, you've got to prepare for that, but it's completely nonsense to devalue this tour by focusing it that way. Every man and his dog knew that taking Ryan Hall and Jermaine McGilvery as your two wingers, and then taking Gildar as your only specialized specialist centre, was an absolute nonsense. Everybody knew that. Everyone knew he take he took too many halfbacks. I mean, it, Blake Austin, we've not even seen him. Jacob Truman, we've not even seen him. Williams, we've you not know, seen. George Williams, we've not seen. You know, and it's like 
any, it's any, like you, you... every, every single person, apart from Wayne Bennett and the powers that be, knew that this yeah. was going to happen. And obviously, in the first game, you've lost Gildar, which then means you, you've, you've shoehorned Hardacre, um, you've got to shoehorn other players into Jake the centre, and Jake, obviously, Jake Connor was there. But now you've lost Ryan Hall as well, so poor Hardacre is now being shoved out on the wing because literally he's the only player in the squad that can play on the wing. And well, it's like, you know, I the whole point yeah. of having a 24 man squad is to do that. And then obviously today, they've now come in and said we're drafting in Ash Hanley. And it was like, well, you should have done that last week because he, by the time he comes over, he can only play one game anyway. And it's like, the other thing, I mean, I know people have said, I mean, I don't know the situation. I presume, uh, you know, a lot of people have said about Regan Grace. But, I mean, players might be on holiday and stuff, might they? Um, well, the, the thing is with. With uh, the, because obviously Ash Hanley is come he's coming into the Great Britain squad. He's not being considered for selection against New Zealand this Saturday, so he's 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 not he's definitely not going to play but this Saturday. But they should Saturday. have done this a week ago. They should have done it a week ago. Yeah. Um. And then after after this weekend's game against New Zealand, we've only uh, no, the Lions no. have only got one game against uh, Papua New Guinea and Port Moresby. Which Hanley will probably play. Well, surely he's going to play. Surely he's they're not going to just fall out. But 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 but, oh, but obviously. When you go to Papua New Guinea, you have to have injections, um, and all members of the Great Britain performance squad had injections before the tour. Um, <laughs> be, be, before the tour squad was announced, right. so I can't remember how many was it. Whether it was thirty six players in that performance unit, they all had the injections in case they were picked on the tour. So Hanley has had these injections. Regan Grace wasn't named in the performance squad, so he's not had the injections. So, so are, he, you he that Grace, are you saying that he'd not pick Grace because of his injections? So, I, I well, Wales International, Regan Grace, couldn't have, couldn't have been selected because he, he's not had the injections and you have to have them three weeks prior to going to right, Papua New right, Guinea. Right. I mean, either way, regardless of who they called up, they should have called Be someone up last week. Because um, Shea Robert-Smith says, I think that's how you pronounce it, Joke Ash Hanley going over and not Grace, um, so that I I, I believe that is why. Um, well, it's I, I don't know if if Wayne Bennett was was going to pick Regan Grace over Ash Hanley. I think he likes his bigger wingers, don't he? Mm. Um, so so it might, Ash Ash Hanley might have gone over Regan Grace anyway, but I've, but I do believe there is something in it where if you're going to Papua New Guinea, you you've got to have had your injections three or four weeks prior to uh, you arriving in Papua New Guinea and I don't think Regan Grace got that because he wasn't named in the initial um, 36 man or whatever it was Great Britain performance squad whereas Ash Hanley uh, was. We've got a couple of comments coming through. Louis Bank says sad news this week with the passing of Sean Day, former um, cultured eagle and St. Helens player. Dave Parkinson's watching. Hello Dave. Uh, we hope you're well. Uh, we miss you. On the couch, uh, there's a spot spot for you right here, Dave, for whenever you're free uh, next on a Thursday. Uh, Louis says, Re Regan Grace isn't in contention because Bennett likes players who show their commitment to the cause and Grace turned his back on Wales last year. Mm, what do you reckon on that? I, would, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't even be sure that Wayne Bennett would even be aware of that. Do you know what I mean? I, I just you just want Sean Wayne as head coach, don't you, James? I, I'm not said that. But I, I do think. Well, well, let's move through the the, net, the rest of this. And also, you've got a comment from uh, your mate Neil Barraclough saying there's definitely not chocolate and marshmallows in that cup in front of you. It's just water, that. Just pure water. We're, we're on a transformation with James at the minute. We're working on it. James has been on a on a five k bike ride. He's he's been uh, having PT classes. He's on the healthy meals, just chicken, rice, and broccoli. You you got to get there, right? What are you Jim? saying about names? If you've seen about names on there, that Sonny Bill Williams will be the thirteenth Williams to play in Super League, which is only bettered by Johnsons has been sixteen and Smith has been thirty six. There's never been a Gordon though, so you never know. So are you, is that what you're pushing you for? Never know. You never has know. there been a Derbyshire? I don't think there's been a Derbyshire. There was a Derbyshire at Warrington. Oh, there was. There was Paul Derbyshire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going through the the things we've learned from the Great Britain tour. One of the one of the points um, was still lacking a proper international calendar, and yes, the dates have been announced for England v Australia next year um, this morning. Um, but it's still only a year in advance. You'd like to get it a bit more, but I suppose the positive that at least it's a year, a year in advance. <laughs> but it could have been. It, it'd it been could. nice if it was a, a few months earlier it than could, this. But, but it's better well, than being six months in advance. It, yeah, it's refreshing news, isn't it? A lot of people can save because obviously we we play. Uh, the Aussies 
at the Tottenham Hotspur ground uh, next year. So a lot of people can can already save plenty of time uh, for to, to save and book a weekend in London, um, or or even a week in London or whatever. Or a whatever weekend in Bolton. Or a weekend in Bolton. Or a weekend in Leeds, yeah. Yorkshire, Lancashire. Um, I, th- I, c- I can't really complain with the venues if I'm honest, James. Obviously, oh, fine, University yeah. of Bolton Stadium, Ellen Road in Leeds, and uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I made up that that we're going to to get to to go to the new Spurs ground. I can't believe I've seen complaints. Uh, I've seen, I've seen a couple, but I've, I've seen, seen someone complaining well. that it was kicking off at half five on a Saturday, and I was like, well. I was like, oh, I surely, surely, if you're travelling from Lancashire, Yorkshire way anyway, you're going to be staying in London, so I don't really see the issue in kicking off at half five. Um, I'm made up because I, I'll probably I get to have a beer in the Spurs ground now where it fills up from the Are you bottom. not working, then? Are you not working? Well, I can have a beer after the game, James, can't I? Surely. Well, um, yeah, so that's uh, keeping out for that on the site. Uh, England, Australia next year. They're going to play, well, it sounds like they're going to try and play a few tour games. You know, France has been mentioned, Catalan has been mentioned, I think, Wigan, Leeds. Jamaica wants um, to play them as well. Jamaica want to play them. I mean, they all can't play so many, though. But, but I, w- I want it to be like an old school tour. I, I know, want, I know I what you mean. I want them to play and, and clubs. I, I, I want them to, to play Jamaica. I want them to play France. They can only play oh. so many, though. And I, and I think the other thing is, is it's a lot different now, isn't it, to back in the day? Because the reason why they played the club teams back in the day was because it was it was in season, wasn't it? Like when the Aussies came over, it was the season was ongoing, so they could play, mm. you know, Hull or whoever in the middle of the season. Um, David David says a year in advance is much better. Have the Aussies now, Kim, because we've been garbage so far on the tour. Well, it's I mean, Great I mean, Britain, Dave. It's not England. It, I mean, it's another. It's Even another, though Wayne Bennett's comments might have uh, hinted at Great Britain being in preparation for the England. It, it is a farce that, um, that that Great Britain aren't playing Australia. It is. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Why would they play? You know, it's a perfect opportunity. They could have played Australia this week. They could have. They could. They could have. And, and we, we've said it in the past on previous shows, James. It's it is a, a massive shame. Um, that we're not playing the Aussies this year, but we're making it's, it's we're making baby steps, aren't we, in the international game? It's good that Great Britain lines is back. Is it though? Is it though? I think there's a there's, a, there's a few tweaks that need to be to be But hasn't the whole Wayne Bennett thing just proved that all Great Britain is is just England in another badge? So well, why that, that's don't they what just we have call to change. It, but that's why what, don't they just call it England then? That's what we've got to change. That that's how the the, the squad should have been selected. Where you've got. Players that we've represented. Well, there's just no. There's not enough good players to do well, that. Well, Regan, Regan Gray should be in it. He should. Because it's like, and it, and it should be the Great Britain but, and but Irish the, line. Not, it shouldn't but, just be Great Britain. Well, yeah, but you say that, but there's no professional clubs in Ireland. There's no semi-professional clubs in Ireland. There's no professional clubs in Scotland. There's no semi-professional clubs in Scotland. There's only two semi-professional clubs in Wales. Wales are genuinely bringing homegrown players through. I don't see that from Scotland and Ireland. Yeah, of course they've got players who are playing for the national team, but they're nowhere near the level required to be playing for Great Britain. And I just don't think, I just think you dilute it even more by saying, well, we've created these sort of artificial nations. Let's, let's, let's force, pe- Wales complete, complete, com- can get on board with that. I can get on board with Welsh players being, you know, saying, right, let's have a quote with three Welsh players. But there just isn't the players from Scotland. And all the players are anyway. The majority of the Scotland team are all English boys with Scottish heritage anyway. Is heritage not important? I'm not saying Somebody heritage isn't important. Might be for some more but but what I'm saying is, is they qualify for Great Britain anyway. So it's not they're not playing for Great Britain because they're Scottish. They're playing for Great Britain because they're a Scotland international that was born in England that qualifies for Great Britain anyway. What about Lachlan Coote? Well, qualifies for England, I should say. Well, obviously, he's the only one, isn't it? Coote's the, literally the only player that plays for Scotland that wouldn't qualify for England. So, and he's in the squad, so it's a great So, I, I just think, I think, as much as I was a chap, I mean, obviously if Great Britain stays, it stays. I championed returning Great Britain, but naturally now, it probably just adds a bit more confusion to the issue. Like, there's been no England test matches this year. You know, Wales have played, Scotland have played, Ireland have played, but England haven't. So, Great Britain is basically just replacing England, isn't it? And until you can get away from that, you know, is there much point in doing it differently like that? I'll represent Ireland. Uh, Steve Butler says there's room for sponsorships on our jackets. Well, we've already got a sponsor at the moment, Steve. We're already in partnership. We're waiting for uh, a cash offer, aren't we? Yeah. From, from so, uh, Telecom Solutions. And we're, we're going to be getting some new gear, hopefully, as well. Uh, yeah. With uh, Heaven and Health 
and we're yeah. sponsors and partners on the. Um, we we, we want to get some boards, don't we? Good idea. We do some, cheese some boards. boards. Cheese boards. Uh, and, and, and Mickey, the, Mickey Honor says why England are not GB. GB GB brand is much stronger in RL than England is. England I agree. is I, it is, it is, football. It is, Great Britain is is. It's always stronger. been Great Britain yeah, since has, before. And, but, was it two thousand five? So England so. Came in? But that's the thing. But the thing is now we've got England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. So it's like you can't have your cake and eat it. Really, in my opinion, I'm like, well, if you're gonna have Great Britain, you don't have the other ones. Uh, Louis says this shows how far, how poor, and how far we've gone backwards over the past 15 years with regards to Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. Magic weekend going to Wales and Scotland was to grow the game, and it hasn't worked. Excuse me. Uh, Dave Parkinson says, to be fair, a lot of the lads coming through in the Scott system have been under 19 players coming through. Um, we could see an Irish. Uh, international in Super League, yeah. Super League next year. Ronald Michaels, Michaels yeah, at Huddersfield signed uh, full time terms with uh, the Huddersfield first team uh, ahead of 2020, and he looks a unit. To be fair, he looks an absolute um, unit. Um, then that the um, so hopefully we, oh, hopefully he does come through and uh, the next point on the, on the what we've learned. National coach needs to be Super League based. So I think get yeah. rid of Wayne Bennett. And get a, a British based coach. It doesn't have to be British, he could be Australian, but based over here. Because I think, uh, and the point, my rationale behind this was that the eight and nine players that play in the NRL are almost like automatic selections for England or Great Britain because, you know, the best players end up playing in the NRL. The key to the squad is numbers 10 to 24, mm. who are your, the rest of your first team and then your squad players. And this is, this is highlighted spectacularly by the selection this year. Bennett has basically not got a clue who to pick outside of the plays he knows. And if, if you had a if you had a Sean Wayne or a Darrell Powell or a coach that was over here, they'd have taken they might have taken Regan Grace or they might have taken Nye Levels or they might have taken Jake Bibby because they've been watching them week in, week out and they see them as as options. And I think that's the key now is you've got to have a coach that's super league based. Yeah they can watch NRL as well. But I think it's complete Wayne Bennett's not got a clue. Beyond them 10 players and the players he's familiar with that have been in his squads for a few years you know like Ryan Hall and Liam Jermaine Watts. McGill I, I, right? yeah I there's think, no I, way I think, Liam, Liam Watts if, if Daryl Pearl or Sean Wayne was coach of GB squad even, Liam Watts would have been in even he? Chris even Chris Hill I don't think Chris Hill was even the best English front rower at Warrington and he's in the Great Britain team you you know yeah. Mike Cooper is probably thinking well, well hang on a sec you know. should, should it, well, it, it depends because if, if it's picked on form Jermaine McGilvery and Ryan Hall shouldn't be in the side. But well, I, I disagree with McGilvery because I still think I don't I don't see I, I don't think you could name two or three better English wingers than McGilvery. Apart from Aiken, well, if, if, if you're only taking two, you probably can. Because Regan Grace was better than Jermaine McGilvery in Super League this year. Yeah, well that you need to name two better than McGilvery. Joe Burgess? Ma- I, I, I don't have any issues with McGilvery's selection, to be honest. But obviously Makinson would have gone if he wasn't injured. But to to only have to, but I just think it highlights that beyond them, you know, beyond them first choice players. Dave, Dave says should what or our Warrington fans or should Warrington fans be worried because Widdop has been shocking so far on the tour. I, I mean, obviously Widdop's done it in the NRL. I I've never really seen I've never really seen anything in him that makes me think. He's a he's a standout, spectacular player who I'd want to build my team around. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, he's, you know his his record speaks for itself in the NRL, so he must he must. Warren, have Warrington something. should be favourites, though, surely, with Winnipeg and Austin in the arms next year. Well, I mean, I was thinking about this before. Do you think Warrington maybe regret having Austin and Winnipeg's marquee? Because you look at there's nothing stopping Warrington doing well. There's nothing stopping any club doing what Toronto have done and chucking silly money at a Sonny Bill Williams or a Latrell Mitchell. You know, do you think now Warrington are maybe sat there thinking, oh, geez, you know, that's a proper marquee signing that Toronto have made there. You know, and we've got, we've got Blake Austin. It's, so, it's such an incredible signing from the Wolfpack. Um, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Like, I, when they first started getting linked with Sonny Bill Williams, I didn't believe any of it because I just thought it's... It's, it's, a a bit like, it's a bit like, they, it, it's almost like, they make Kukash look like a pound land owner, don't they? Like when Kukash came in, he was like, yeah, we want to sign Sam Tompkins. And it's like, and Toronto owners coming in and be like, no, we want to sign Sonny Bill Williams. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's the top of the top, isn't he? Uh, he and, is, and obviously he's got a bit fed up of that with the, 
Salford, didn't you? When they get linked with everyone, and what do you, know. what do you reckon a, a year out for for Sam Burgess in? He'll join Toronto next year. No, he, he must be in a bad way too. Do you not reckon Sam Burgesson? Oh, Sam Burgesson, Sonny Bill, it's the same team. Ah. Well, I mean, Sam Burgesson will want you older, I suppose. But um, Well, let's talk about uh, Toronto then. So, obviously, they, they're well, Louis, Louis, Louis thinks Warrington are lacking some big, nasty forwards. Yeah, they need a prop. They're, they're making an announcement at 12.30, so we'll let you know when we know. Um, but I don't know if it, that might not be a player. Sonny Bill, a Sonny Bill signing for Toronto then ten million dollars, ten million Australian dollars I think it is over mm. two years. It's something like two point seven million pound a year, which is about forty eight grand a week, which is a uh, good going. Um, seven grand. He's seven. only actually played one hundred and thirty first grade rugby league games. Still a lot though. Still got two NRL uh, um, premierships. Um, Toronto are sort of flirting with a few other mega stars. Manu Tuilagi, the England Rugby Union International, is being linked, although his club, Leicester Tigers, um, have played that down. The talk is Christian Wade, another former rugby uh, England Rugby Union player who is currently uh, in the Buffalo Bills NFL practice squad. Um, Valentine Holmes, another um, Aussie who is in the NFL with... Um, New York Jets, he's in their practice squad, he could be tempted. I think North, North Queens and Cowboys are trying to get him as well. Um, and then Ben Teo, who is another former England Rugby Union centre, he is currently playing French Rugby Union, which means he can't play for England anymore. Um, a big cash offer Toronto believe to have made for him. And uh, Gary Carter said another name this morning, Semi Rad Rada. Yeah, yeah, F Fiji and Rugby Union International, Fiji Rugby League International, Australia yeah. Rugby League International. I mean, it, it's interesting because obviously you get two marquee players, don't you? Rad, 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 so. Rad Rada's good, but he's obviously he's a winger, isn't he? So would you pay marquee money for a winger? Well, it's all about it's the name, isn't it? But I think, obviously, Toronto have got the two marquees, so I suppose they've got to be careful because they can only sign one megastar, really. Um Anyone beyond two is going to have to count towards the cap. Now, obviously, you get Val the Valentine Holmes would be a pick up. At you get, you get, you'd get dispensation for Christian Wade and Tuilagi. To be fair, you'd get salary cap dispensation for a year. But then after after a year, you you've then got to pay him. Is it fifty percent mm. for the next year and then full for the year after that? So it's like, well, you if you sign him now, yeah, okay, it won't count on the cap for the first year. But then you've got to factor that in next year. Um, um, it, it's interesting to see the speculation, though. We, we've got a few more questions. Mickey Horner says, who will play six for Leeds in 2020, Richie Myler or Rob Louie? Um, surely it'll be Louie and Gale. I think it'll be Louie and Gale. Be bear in mind that they've gone out and paid, uh, paid a fee for Ma Ma Myler's a seven anyway, isn't he? He's more of a seven than well, he's I wonder what, what they're going to do with Myler. Are they going to try and... What, what are they going to try and do? Are they going to try and use him as, a, as an interchange hooker or are they going to try and use Luke Gale as an interchange hooker? Are they going to play Louis? 13 or do you know what I mean it, it seems they've got Carl McClellan as well Leeds haven't they he's, he's pr yeah, probably knocking really on a goal yeah. for, for, mm. for a first team player well, so are they trying to move Myler on I, I, think, I think they'll be trying to, to move Myler uh, because I, I, I I can't see him getting over Louis or Gil I'd like to say with, with McClelland in the back uh, um, Dave says Sonny Bill Williams is he passed it he's 33 and hasn't played at RL for two or three years 34 isn't he uh, yeah, he's 34, but he's, I, I don't, he's not past it. He, hey, he, listen, he, keeps, part, himself, he keeps himself part, in good part shape. Part of the thing with Sonny Bill is it's all about the, him as a person as well, His, you know how well known he is um, you know, in the rugby world, but also the, the, the sort of the discipline and uh, his personality that, that, that obviously Toronto are looking to bring that in. Um, let's run through some of the other bits and bobs from the news. Ben Barber. Um, he's set to make his rugby not league that return. For a while. Um, obviously, he's banned from the NRL. Did Super League say they banned him from Super League? I don't. I don't. When, I don't when, think, when I don't they said he was Super, banned from the NRL, I don't think Super League said said they banned him. But I, th I think Super League disapproved or something like that. Or they, they said that they didn't want him back or something. Like, um, he's played for. He was played for Mackay Cutters, was it? Yeah, the, he's played for a Mackay club um, in the in a cup tournament. Um, but it's 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 not an NRL sanctioned competition, right. so. Um, it's it's obviously he's he's free to play. He's clear to play. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Barber's back. He's been playing uh, a bit of soccer, is is what they say in uh, Australia. He's been get him at soccer. six. Get him at six. I'll, I'll have him at last six. We need all all we can get at the moment. Um, um, and 
Um, he's been working in a metal factory uh, in recent times since he's been from the Cowboys. Um, <laughs> Wigan winger Tom Davis has been linked to a move to Catalan. Wigan have got a few wingers, haven't they, um, on board? They've got Burgess, Manfredi. Obviously, uh, Marshall, maybe came in Jay as well. Bebe, Bevan French has played on the wing. Hardacre. <laughs> so, so um, Davis, he's been linked with Leeds as well, hasn't he, Davis? He has been linked with Leeds, but he, look, he looks set to, to join Catalans now. There's a bit of a wing continuity as well. Is that a well. permanent it's, deal? Or? Uh, I don't know if it's permanent or loan uh, as of yet. You might as well start calling him the Catalan but, Pieters. But you, you probably would assume it would be a permanent deal because no. because obviously we're going to have got so many wingers. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I mean, they probably wouldn't need it to Maybe they should. Maybe they could do that. In Cat, instead of instead of Catalan Dragons Fire Eaters, they could become the Catalan Pie Eaters. They got the Tompkins too, McAloran. They have Louis Tierney. Tierney. They could start. They could sell wigging kebabs at uh, Stad Gilbert Brutus. <laughs> um, Adam Tangata has signed. Um, that is that right. Oh, that doesn't look right With to me. Wakefield, uh, yeah, Tangat has signed for Wakefield. Scott Wielden has gone back to Sheffield. Um, French, let's talk France, because we you know, love a bit of France. We'll be peer have gone top of the Elite Two Championship. Let's give a shout out to our friend Frederick Camel in Carcassonne. Me and Drew are going there next My Friday. My boy, our boy, isn't he? He's our boy. Yeah, we're going there next Friday um, for the Elite One Championship Magic Weekend. There's five games across the two days. And uh, Frederick Camel from Carcassonne. Jake Emmett plays there, the former Lee in Toronto and St. Helens forward. Um, Carcassonne are the host team there. All the games are at their ground. Um, and Frederick Camel has reached out to us. Um, he's bringing us some stash, I believe, next week. He's invited us to the captain's run as well, so we're very much looking forward to he's that. Asked me, he's asked me to play. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, He's not really, he's not in, really. In, relation, in, in relation to France, the, the French domestic competition announced a new broadcast deal this week. They've got 17 live matches across the season, but still no TV deal for Catalan. So Catalan um, was on being sports in France, um, and part of that was, I think the reason why it went Super League or Catalan or whatever combination went back to them and asking for more money, they said no. Um, and obviously then walked away. Catalan reportedly are, were in touch with Le Quip, which is an, a sports channel in, in France. Um, again, they'd even offered to move their games, like they play Fridays and Sundays and whatever. Um, that seems to have fallen through. It'd be a huge blow um, for this theory about broadcast deals and TV deals if Catalan can't get a TV well, deal. it seems like the Catalans have, have cocked up, doesn't it? Well, is it Catalan or is it Super League? Because the, we, obviously we got told... Um, it was about Super League sort of asked for more money for the rights, hadn't they? Yeah, but it seems like Catalans are doing the no negotiations, aren't they? That's what it seems like anyway. Well, it is now, yeah. Um, but maybe it's got desperate. Maybe whoever it is doing the, the negotiations have obviously cocked up. They've asked for more money and it's come back, back to bite them on the mm. backside. The, uh, that's what's happened in effect. Uh, being, they, they've done pretty hard decent job over the last couple of years I think it's fair to say well, I mean you can't, you can't um, argue with every single Catalan home every, game every game and, and don't forget at the same not... time as well every single uh, home game every single Saturday they play at home it's on at the same time same time well, and, and that's the thing that you know I think that's one of the issues that fans raise is that Toronto well not Toronto well yeah Toronto to an extent and Catalan all their games are on the same day at the same time Whereas obviously over here it's like you might be Thursday night, you might be Friday night, you might be Sunday, you might be Saturday, whatever. Uh, so Catalan, that's a massive benefit for them. But also the fact that Sky can obviously plug into that feed. And every week Sky basically show three games. Sky obviously gives us this whole, oh, we're showing more rugby league than ever before. Well, they're not going to be able to do that if, if, if Catalan don't get a deal. We're not sure what's happening with Toronto. There's no, I don't think no. there's been any mention that any of Toronto's games are going to be on Sky yet. Um, the the double headers on Sky that first weekend, isn't it? But nothing about Toronto home games, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, moving on with the news, Lithuania are playing their first rugby league international this week. That's at Cardiff Arms Park. They're playing Wales Dragon Arts. Um, which there's, is, there's uh, a name we recognise in there, isn't there? In the Lithuanian team. Mikolauskas. What was this? Brett, it was, wasn't it? Brett. He plays for Culture the Eagles. Yeah. He's the brother, we think, of referee Scott Mikolauskas. Um, <laughs> I think, I think they're related, anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, well, anyway. Um, Damien Irvine, who was the chief exec at Cronulla Sharks, has joined Hunslet as a 
non-executive director from Cronulla to Hunslet. Exactly, that, um, that is a switch, isn't it? Martin Hall is staying at Rochdale as director of rugby. Um, Toronto Wolfpack, it has been mad this week, hasn't it, with all, <laughs> with all that Sunny Bill talk. Um, Sunny Bill will earn £7,000 a day. A day, well, is it Toronto Wolfpack? Aidan Caesar is leaving Canberra. Is, is it Huddersfield he's going to? Aiden Caesar. Aiden Caesar, three year deal at Huddersfield. Is that what you're saying? Right. Um, obviously, good... they re signed Sam Williams. That'd be a good sign. Sa- It'd be a good signing Caesar, but then having said that, they signed a, a, you know, Aquila Uate last year, and he was a great signing on paper. But... Oh, I don't, I don't know though, because Aquila Uate is, is pretty well known for struggling with injuries throughout his career. Um, so I thought. I thought although he's, he's been fantastic for Fiji on the, in, in the international game, he's been brilliant for New South Wales, he has been known to pick up injuries, um, so I did think that was a little bit of a risk for the Giants at first. We've not seen him that much, hopefully we will see him a lot more in 2020, but I think ADC is a, fa- a fantastic coup. School cap? No school cap. No school no cap. No school cap. Turkey International. I still um, need to do that feature on Skullcap. Uh, yeah, they've re signed uh, Sam Williams. I was going to say Reese Williams, then. He's, he's, he's going to solve first. Um, um, yeah, they've re signed Sam Williams, so they could have Jack White and George Williams and Sam Williams competing for half spots uh, next year. Feverston have confirmed the signing of Brett Ferris. That's despite we ran, a re- we ran this in the, in the gossip column many, many moons ago that Ferris was leaving Leeds. Um, and it was flatly denied by the player and obviously signed Feverston. So. We got quite a lot of stick from fans as well at, the mo- uh, at that yeah. moment in time saying don't trust Love Rugby League, but we did say he was leaving Leeds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and look what's happened is, hey, but it, remember when it happened uh, to us with uh, right, saying Mor- Morgan, Morgan Esker was oh, leaving yeah. Wigan? He came out, his agent came out as well, I think, uh, said they were going nowhere. Four days later, he signed for, for Wakefield <laughs> on loan. Um, yeah. Um, two 0 to the rugby league. Three 0 to the rugby league. Um, I, can, I can go on, James. Yeah, but I can go on. But, the yeah. um, the uh, World Cup qualifiers come to an end this month. Um, USA are playing Cook Islands. That is for the fifteenth place, and then the sixteenth and final place is going to be fought between Greece and Serbia. The fourteen teams that have qualified. I've done a piece on this. See if I can remember. Australia, England, France. Fiji, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Tonga, Lebanon, Jamaica. I need two more. Either the USA or Cookies? No, 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 I've, I've counted them. Fiji? I didn't say Fiji. Fiji, did you say? I said Papua New Guinea, who's the other one? France, Jamaica, Lebanon. You did a feature on it earlier yeah, this week. Go on the website and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lee made Six about 300 notes. signings on Tuesday. Right, shall I see if I can remember <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to. Uh, so, the, well, Mickey Adams joined the coach and started strength and conditioning coach. Uh, they've signed Ban- Ben Halliwell from London. Danny they've Addy. signed Nathan Mason from London. They've signed Danny Addy. They've uh, re signed Jordan Thompson, re signed Liam for Scythe, signed Callum Field from Wigan. Nick uh, Glowing, the, the, the Thornley screen. brothers have, have re signed. Uh, Nick Glow, Scotland International, brought him from down under. He's a teacher looking for work in the Wigan and Lee area. Uh, and Ryan Hintz. Ryan Hintz from Widness, uh, they've signed. Brad Hall Road, an exciting youngster. And I'm Struggling. Junior so Ben Reynolds and Brown, Adam Higson right. are already signed up for Sam 2020. Brooks, Tom Sam Spencer. Brooks, Tom what? Spencer. We're, hey, we're having them all. Liam we're having them all. Um, There's quite a few Scotland internationals in there. Could be because obviously John Duffy was Scotland head coach. Um, other player news. Zane Tetevano, the New Zealand prop, had been heavily linked with Warrington. He's turned down a move to Super League to stay in the NRL. Um, Toronto, the Super League fixtures are out this week. Um, Tor- so, whoa, 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 Don Spark says, is Sonny Bill going to be the most expensive bench warmer? Oof. He's not going to be benched, is he? You can't say, you can't you can't say, you can't say anything Bill. bad about Sonny Bill in this office. Um, Toronto, uh, fixtures are out. Toronto are playing three of their home games in the UK. One will be at Headingley as part of a double header. They're going to play Castleford at Headingley um, as part of a double header with Leeds and Hull. They're then going to play um, St. Helens at Allianz Park, which is the home of Saracen Rugby Union 
down in northwest it was, London. It was, That's an artificial pitch. It was quite ironic how on the day it was announced that they were going to play at the Allianz Park that Saracens would dock 35 <laughs> points for salary cap breach in rugby union. Yeah. Thank you very much, Saracens. Yeah, um, and then the other one, um, Toronto are going to play York, uh, Wakefield at York's new community stadium, and that's going to be a double header with a York <laughs> Championship game. Championship fixtures are out on November the 17th. Summer Bash is May 30th, May 31st, just for those of you who. Are we going, we're going this year, James? We'll, we'll probably do. We, well, we were at Newcamp last year, weren't we? A little, uh, we'll, we'll a little weekend in Blackpool Sim by the seaside. Our colleague, Josh McAllister, who's graduated from university uh, this week. He's, I think he's best mates with Rodri Lloyd of the Swinton Lions. <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll keep it his host for a couple of days uh, on the seaside. Yeah, um, someone who won't probably be in Blackpool next year is Latrell Mitchell, who is at Sydney Roosters, who've withdrawn their two-year contract extension for him. He's on contract for next year, but they've basically said he's, they're happy to let him go now. They offered him eight hundred thousand dollars a year, um, and he wants a million. Um, can the wolf pack off of that? Well, I mean, we were, we, were, they can. <coughs> we were saying this before, that would be a For me, now they've got Sonny Bill on board, if I was Toronto, well, I mean, obviously, you can't tell someone how to spend the money, but Latrell Mitchell, you think, one of the best players In you way, could yeah. pick up. It was Still pretty young as well. You know, he could be at the wolf pack for five. He, he'd, he'd bring years. even more attention from the NRL onto the wolf pack. Is that more important than, say, getting a rugby union, another rugby union player in, uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, Mitchell would be some picker, wouldn't he? But I, I, I think that, they get, I, I don't know. Would he want to go to the Wolfpack? Because he's he's at the peak of his career. Well, right I mean, now, well you he? say that, but obviously he's clearly motivated by money. Because Sydney Roosters have offered him, you know, he's won back-to-back -back premierships. He's at Sydney Roosters, the best team in the NRL. They're offering him £800,000. He wants a million. You know, I, I've seen this talk about oh, I want, he wants to play standoff, he wants to play fullback, and it's like, well, what gives a play? What, why do certain players get to pick and choose the positions? If you're a centre, you're a bloody centre. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll see. Anyway, Lloyd White is returning to the British or the European game. He's signed for Toulouse um, in the Championship next season. Fixtures Easter weekend scrapped. Thoughts on that, Drew? Uh, very happy. <coughs> um, I think it, it's about time we put play well for first. I know we've been banging the drum saying, oh, let's think of the players for a couple of years now, and we've not done it until now. Um, so I'm glad it's been scrapped. Uh, the players get a full recovery, and hopefully then, the, the couple of weeks after Easter um, will be, won't be a, um, a drab to watch, in effect, because uh, players' bodies become tired. The, 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 game, the, the Easter Monday game in particular, how many have gone over the last couple of years? Well, throughout my lifetime, yeah, in, in fact. They teams just, throw them they're, they're yeah. awful. They're, they're awful so, to watch because they all play the derby games, the ones they want to win on the Friday, and the bodies are still shot on the Monday. Um, so I'm glad it's I'm glad it's been scrapped. Uh, hopefully Magic Weekend is the next uh, little to be uh, concept um, to, be, to be ditched as well. So Easter Weekend then. Thursday night will be Leeds-Wakefield. Friday will be the whole derby in Wigan Saints. Saturday, Toronto, Catalan, is it? Is it Catalan, Can't Toronto? Castleford are playing somebody as well. We should have wrote, we should, and it, we should we should have wrote them down. down. It, that, 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 it's, there's no games on the Monday, though, is that right? Like, there's no, no they're not stretching one oh, out. Oh, they the might have one on the Monday. Well, we'll I, I don't know. We'll I can't out. remember. I can't yeah. remember. We've had so much news this week, James. That my mind Does has it, been uh, frazzled. In fact, let, let's, get it, let's, let's have a bit of time out here. We'll, 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 we'll get the fixture list up here. Um, Dave Parkinson says Sunday is the under 17 game between Yorkshire and Lancashire 130 at Featherstone Rovers. Is that in our league? Uh, we won't say the name of the ground because we don't want to. Uh, <laughs> Post it's, office it's, rule. It's in effect the heaven and health. Uh, <laughs> right, here we go. Hang on. Right, stop. Easter weekend, all, f all five games, all five English games are on Sky. Um, Leeds Wakefield on Thursday night. 7.45, Hull KR against Hull, 12.30 on Friday, Saints Wigan, 2.45 on Good Friday, then Catalan are playing Toronto in France, that's no TV at the moment, Warrington versus Salford at the Hallowell Jones, that's 3pm on the Saturday, and then on the Sunday, Casper Huddersfield, 3pm. So no games on the Monday. So no games on the Monday, um, and then obviously it's a, a standard week, the week after that, Wigan Leeds is a, is a pearler. That opening round then of fixtures, if you've not seen... 
the very first game of the season, January 30th, Wigan against Warrington at the DW Stadium. And then Wigan the, versus Hastings. And then on the Friday, it's a repeat of the grand final as St. Helens play Salford. That's the Sky game on the Friday night. Hull Care play Wakefield. Um, Huddersfield's first game is a trip to Catalan. And then on the Sunday, that double header we mentioned before, Toronto against Castleford at Headingley. 2 30, that one kicks off. And then Leeds versus Hull, 4 45. That'll be a belting day. It will. it will. It it'll will. be cold, but it'll be belting that. In January. Um, um, Louis, Louis says the warranted news that has been released is that the kit release event. Shocking that from uh, the wall. Don't, don't send out a press release saying we've got a, 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 announced it, saying we've got an announcement at half 12. Just do it. Just announce announcing it. Announcing that you've got an announcement and all. That's annoying, isn't it? It's like when you, you have a meeting for a meeting for a meeting, James. <laughs> Um, the other thing in the fixtures is the final round, round 29, all the games will be on the same day and at the same time. So that's Friday, September 11th. That'll be the final round of Super League games. Um, some interesting ones in there. Casper Huddersfield, Hull Salford, Hull KR Catalan, St. Helens Toronto, Wakefield Leeds, Warrington Wigan. Um, obviously, we may have some battles for the top five. We may have some battles at the bottom, of course, this year. Uh, the year just gone, we had a brilliant relegation battle, which meant that games had to be rescheduled and rejigged. Well, they've, they've listened to the fans, thank God, um, and they've now, now arranged them all to be at the same time. Um, I'll tell you what's confusing me about this fixture list, is all Toronto's uh, home games are listed as a... Uh, as Canadian time, so I mean, I ain't got a clue what time that is our time. So Toronto's first game in Canada um, is against Hull, on Saturday, April the 18th, if anyone's booked Canada, please let us it's know. It's quite fitting that, because their first game was against Hull, wasn't it? Uh, in 2017, pre-season. Oh, well, you know better than me. So they, they play they play Hull at home, then the following week they play Wigan at home. Um, the following the week after that they play St. Helens at home, um, and then they come back over. So three three games in a row at home, it's not too bad. They come back over then to play Wakefield and Huddersfield. Are we going next year, James? Well, I mean, it depends when are we going to go. Will budget stretch to April? I think April will be a push. Do you, they play they play Casper June 13th, that's probably more realistic. Um, Hull KR June the 20th. Who have you got last game at season? Come on. Saints away. Oh. The last home game you want to know. Last home game, go on. They play Warrington on July the 4th, they play Salford July the 11th. Unless we go for a playoff, potentially if you get <laughs> They play Leeds on August the 2nd, Huddersfield August the 8th. I think that's it then. I think they're over here then for the rest of the season. Oh, Catalan, August 29th. We could, hey, Wakefield, we could, we could fly over with our mate from France. <laughs> wait, wait, Wakefield, September the 5th. That's the last home game. Toronto, Wakefield, September the 5th. We could go for that one. That gives us, a, gives us what, 10 months to save up? Yeah. Get some more sponsorship in? If Steve at Telecom Solutions, he could sponsor us to go to Toronto. Mr. He? Steve Butler, he sponsors nearly, nearly every player at Salford, I believe. So uh, hopefully mm. he'll, he'll get behind us on yeah. our tour of uh, tour well, the globe, Toronto. isn't it? We'll be going to Australia soon, hopefully. You, you were a bit gutted that Toronto aren't playing any games in Amsterdam, weren't well, you? Well, I was. I won't mind at a weekend in Amsterdam or Rotterdam. Um, the Liverpool or Rome. We've done Liverpool, haven't we? We have done, we have done Liverpool. Um, I, I've been to Rome, I've been to the Stadio Olympico, watching Roma versus Napoli. <laughs> um, so this week then, um, the second test, uh, well, are they calling it a second test? Or is that, is that just what we're calling it? Well, it's it's kind of the second test, isn't it? I think it's, it, well, it is a second we're, test, we're really, the, in effect. Where are the teams? But what, what I don't get is, why not have a three-match test series? Because, say, if, if Great Britain beat no, the Kiwis... No, no, you're wrong. They should they should just be playing Australia. They shouldn't have played New Zealand well, twice. Well, yeah, but if, you should play them once or th three times. I don't, I don't think you should so, play them twice and have it as, as a test series, one-all. So, New Zealand, Great Britain, it's at the Orange Theory Stadium in Christchurch. Um, there, was a, there was a point made, and I can't remember what it was now... Um, Cheerio Dave, he's, back, he's going back to work now. Um, Thanks for joining it, us. Kick off 7am on Saturday morning, um, live on BBC Two, coverage starts at 6.30. Highlights are on BBC One at 1.15. One um, we'll just run through the teams. New Zealand have got two of ours as Shep fullback, Mar Marlon, Nicole Clogstad, Manu Azako, Johnson and Marshall at halfback, Setsavano Smith, Warrior Hargreaves, Nicora Hawari Rarinera and Tapine. Um, <laughs> is that, have I done the full pack there yet? And then the bench is Nicarima, Proctor, Armout and Blair 
Hughes, Hamlin, Bromwich, Simonson and Papali are the reserves. Great Britain are going with Lomax is staying at fullback. McGilvray on one wing with Hughes and Connor in the centre. It's Hardacre on the other wing. Widdop and Hastings get another another bash at half back. Hill, Hodgson, Burgess is your front row. Bateman, Whitehead and Graham at the back row. Jones, Philbin, Clark, Wormsley on your bench and still Austin Williams twiddling the thumbs. Luke Thompson, um, presumably he'll feature against Papua New Guinea. Do you think maybe? Well, yeah, I don't see why we've seen loads of stories saying Luke Thompson's back for the test against the Kiwis this week because he's not because he's he's in the, he's been named in the reserves. He's, been, he's, 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 like, he's like twentieth man in English. Um, so, I, I'm, what does George Williams have to do to get a place in the arms? <coughs> well, because. What, why take all these halfbacks? Because no, no, we, Jake, we, we Truman, Jake Truman's not even named in the reserves. No, it's ridiculous. He's not even named in the reserves, so he, he's not going to play against Papua New Guinea. Now, now, you, can understand it, take, you can understand him taking Truman because it's good experience but for don't name him. You can take him, but don't name him in the official squad. You could have took Morgan Smithies. Don't name him in the official mm. squad. Just have him there in and around training. Just don't name them. Mm. Name a, a proper squad. But like, because... Uh, against Papua New Guinea next week, I don't. It'll change. It'll change the squad around, and I think Williams will play against Papua New Guinea. But he's obviously going to play well. Because, they, because if they lose this week, they're going to have to win at Papua New Guinea. Because they're not going to. Well, you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got to change something that's broken. No, no. But what I mean is, is it's not like you can. It's not like you can just treat it as a well, as an exhibition. You've well, got. They, they're going to have to go into that game. Yeah, to but win if it. if they lose against the Kiwis this weekend. There's obviously something wrong because they've lost three out of three, oh, yeah. so they, they've got to change something. Yeah, uh, but you'd imagine that. And, and George, probably going to be the weakest team that they're going to play. Pe people say I might be, pe Some people might say I might be biased, but George Williams is by far the best defensive half back we've got. He's, he'll, he won't let nothing pass. But well, is that the issue? We're only conceding twelve points. They only conceded twelve points. They conceded what fourteen the week before. They're not conceding many points. The problem is they're not scoring. And he's got a good running game, Williams. So we'll see anyway. So that's Saturday morning. Uh, just before we go, the seven o'clock kickoff is it? Seven o'clock, yeah, Saturday morning. Golden Boot um, for the International Player of the Year is going to be announced. John Bateman is on the short list, which to me is ridiculous because it's based on international games. Now I thought this was funny because it popped up on um, last year. It was this. It was on today. This day last year that Tommy Makinson was announced as the Golden Boot winner, and I seen a, a feature on the NRL website this morning that said. Um, a year ago today, the relatively unknown St. Helens winger, Tommy Makerson, was given the Golden Boot amidst much criticism, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just thought it was it was typical of the NRL that in the press release that, they, that, that was then sent out about, they mentioned John Bateman, oh, Bateman's had a great year at Canberra, um, and even though Great Britain have lost two matches, he's up for it. It's like, if he was if Bateman was playing for Wigan, he'd be nowhere near that. Yeah. Because none of them Great Britain players yeah. should be near it. I, I I think to be Lola, he should win it. If it's based on international performance, he's been fantastic for Tonga this year. He even went over and played in the mid-season test when he was out his favourite lead, if you if you remember rightly. Crazy. Um, and what it's been such a crazy year for for to be Lola, he. Um, I I think he should win it. I th I think as all the players nominated and Tonga's rise to international stardom, shall we say, uh, I'm fully backing him. The Reds are rising, and ho hopefully. Stephen Butler watches this and uh, Telecom Solutions, our, maybe our future partners, um, will we'll like what I'm saying. Yeah. That's it uh, from us this week on the Rugby League Lunch Hour. Um, it'll be able to watch on demand on Facebook. We'll put it on YouTube. We'll put it on the website as well. You can download it as a podcast as well, I think, now on, on iTunes, Spotify, Audio Boom, um, if you want to catch up at your leisure. We're back every Thursday, 12 till 1. Thanks, as always, to Betfred and also to our new partners from Heaven and Health, Eat healthy all week and we'll see you next Thursday.